Napoleon Bonaparte, a name familiar to all. Son of an Italian lawyer, a decorated major general of the French army, ruler of France. But how did this son of the revolution come to be the antithesis of that very revolution? Let us delve into the rich history of the age of Napoleon. Born in 1769, Napoleone Buonaparte was raised in the countryside of Corsica. His family was of Florentine nobility. Napoleone's father, as all Italians do, had contacts in high places, namely in France, where Napoleone would soon go to school. After learning French, his father assisted him in obtaining a royal scholarship for a military school. His peers tended not to like him very much. What y'all think about that new Italian boy? I don't like him. He's Italian and he's short. Buongiorno. Hey, you that new Italian kid, right? Oui. What's your name again? Napoleon. What's that? Napoleon. Come again? Napoleon. Napoleon soon changed his name to the more French sounding Napoleon. After graduating from military school at the age of 16 and a height of 5 feet 2 inches, he became the lieutenant of the French army. So there's a lot of rumors going around about Napoleon's height. A lot of people say he was only 5'2 when he died, but they have evidence that he was in fact 5'2 in French inches, which are significantly larger than the English inch, which is what we use today. He wasn't as short as people make it out to be, that is merely a rumor. Napoleon was disliked by his fellow officers because he was short and spoke with an Italian accent. He studied strategy and was influenced by the likes of Charlemagne, Alexander the Great, and Frederick the Great. In 1792, Napoleon became captain and performed so well commanding artillery at the capture of Toulon that he was promoted to brigadier general. In 1795, he saved the national convention from the Parisian mob for which he was promoted to major general. After becoming a hero in certain social circles, Napoleon met his wife-to-be, Josephine de Beauharnais. She was a widow and six years older than Napoleon. Despite his knowledge of her adulterous activities, he remained loyal to her. Shortly after his marriage to Josephine de Beauharnais, Napoleon became commander of the French army in Italy. He transformed this group of soldiers and eventually, after battle, brought peace between Austria and the French army. Because of his apparent vitality, charisma, and decisiveness, by the end of his rule of the French army in Italy, his men developed a confidence in Napoleon. To his ranked officers, he was strict and harsh. On the other hand, Napoleon clothed, fed, and with his words, beguiled his underlings. They knew I was their patron. When he returned to France in 1797, he was given command of an army to invade England. In an attempt to weaken the British economy, Napoleon invaded and took control of Egypt. After this success, the British Navy destroyed the French fleet at the Battle of the Nile in 1798. Napoleon returned to Paris and staged a coup d'etat. He was the first consul and became emperor after two years. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Napoleon was coronated by Pope Pius VII. It is my firm intention that the Christian, Catholic, and Roman religion shall be preserved in its entirety. No society can exist without morality. There is no such good morality without religion. It is religion alone, therefore, that gives to the state a firm and durable support. Napoleon himself was not actually a religious person. He did not have any beliefs as far as religion goes. He considered himself to be a rational thinker. In reconciling with the church, he really only did that for political gain. Before the revolution, France had nearly 300 different legal systems. During the revolution, attempts were made to create a standardized code of laws, but a single set of laws was not agreed upon. It was left up to Napoleon to implement a simplified legal system. These codes were known as the Code Napoleon. In 1806, Napoleon created a continental system. This system was an attempt at weakening the British economy, rendering them incapable of supporting an army. The continental system set up an embargo on all British goods coming into the continental Europe. This system was a failure. The plan, in reality, made Napoleon's empire turn bitter towards its overweening foreign policies, causing them to collaborate with the British. Instead of destroying their economy, the continental system brought the British trade to a record high. Napoleon was great at making people hate him. The success of the French Revolution inspired a sense of nationalism among conquered territories to begin with. On top of that, add an oppressive government and you've got yourself a recipe for revolt. In 1812, Russia decided to leave the continental system. If Russia were to do this with impunity, other nations would fall. Napoleon knew this and aptly invaded Russia in June of 1812 with 600,000 men. Napoleon counted on a quick resolution of this conflict. But the Russians would avoid battle by evading the French army, sacking their own villages during the retreats, so the pursuers would not be. At the Battle of Borodino, a costly victory was won by the French. When the surviving French army reached Moscow, they found the city had already been set ablaze by the Russians. Due to the lack of preparation for the harsh Russian winter, Napoleon was forced to start his great retreat in October. Of the 600,000 men that followed Napoleon to Russia, only 40,000. It said during the, the invasion of Russia, the French army had a bit of a wardrobe malfunction. Napoleon's buttons, as experts call it, refers to the tin buttons commonly used on the French military uniforms. At 13 degrees Celsius, tin begins to disintegrate exponentially. So in theory, as to why the French didn't do so well in Russia, was because their clothes were literally falling off. They didn't perform effectively in the cold. This Russian campaign will quickly become his undoing. Knowing that Napoleon was in a weakened military state, other continental nations followed in Russia's footsteps. Britain, Portugal, Austria, Prussia, Sweden, Spain, and many German states organized their armies and formed the Sixth Coalition. The goal of this coalition was to end Napoleon's reign.
Oh, I didn't notice you there, but while we're on the subject, Napoleon was totally corrupt. How can Napoleon Bonaparte call himself the son of the French Revolution? He undid the majority of the laws passed during the most radical parts of the revolution. For example, divorce was made a more simple process, and laws were passed that made equal rights for both men and women. Napoleon undid all of this progress. In 1814, the many allies against Napoleon in the French army finally defeated France and drove Napoleon into exile in the Italian island of Elba. The Battle of Waterloo is essentially the turning point of the war. After the Battle of Waterloo, everything goes downhill for Napoleon. Napoleon stalls, claiming that the battlefield is too wet to fight on. Eventually, they do engage in battle, and Napoleon is defeated by the Prussian army leader who's 72 at the time and the only person to ever beat Napoleon twice. Of course there's the cream puff theory in which Napoleon eats too many cream puffs on the night before the battle, giving him nausea, heartburn, upset stomach, and diarrhea. This may quite likely be the reason for their loss that day at Waterloo. Soon after this defeat, Napoleon was exiled to St. Helena, a remote island in the South Atlantic, commonly used as a penal colony by the British. In 1821, Napoleon died as a result of stomach cancer. It is believed that his father had the same fate years earlier. Napoleon dominated not only the politics of France, but all of Europe from 1799 to 1815. He was an ambitious young man and only grew stronger as he got older. His actions ranged from starting a French banking system to starting an empire. But sure enough, the empire would collapse as quickly as it started. This was the end of Napoleon. Oh no!